Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Christmas Eve service. I want to go through just a couple of housekeeping type things first. If you would record your presence in the friendship pad, that would be very helpful, just so we know who was here tonight. Um, many of you are guests here, and so I want you to know we will not be passing a donation plate around. If you should want to donate to the church, there are plates in the back where you could leave it as you leave. Okay. Now, hopefully you all have um, a candle um, in your possession. You're going to put them aside for now. We're going to get to that later. But when we get to it, you probably are familiar with how a glow stick works. When I say it's time, you'll bend it until you hear a little crack. Now, you don't want to bend it like 90 degrees because then the outside of it might crack, and that wouldn't be good. You're just trying to crack a glass that's on the inside, and you may want to do that more than once so that the glass inside breaks up, and then you'll shake it, and then we'll have a good, safe um, candle. For the end of the service, when we're singing Silent Night, we'll all have our candles. So now, welcome. Friends, neighbors, travelers, welcome one and all to this Christmas Eve celebration worship. May Christ find room in your souls to be born again tonight. O come, all ye faithful. Will you stand if you are able as we sing? to worship. Tuck the child in the manger bed. Jesus is born. Let Christmas begin. No cradle, just a manger where cows and sheep are fed. No blanket, just the hay there and no pillow for his head. No robe, no sleepers, no pajamas, just swaddling cloths to wear. No hospital, no nurses, nor warm home, but love and care were there. Angels for his choir, shepherds for his friends, and kings who came to worship as their long journey ends. Mary and Joseph there too, to care for that special one. And so we sing Alleluia and join the angel choirs. For Jesus was born in a manger on that first Christmas morn. Tuck the child in the manger bed. Jesus is born. 
Let Christmas begin. together in the opening prayer. Holy God, come into this holy night with stars to light our way to the cradle of peace. Come with angels to sing us to a deep joy. Come to this moment and open our hearts so we may hear the familiar story new and fresh. Surprise us and remind us that the child in the manger is Emmanuel, God with us now and always. Amen. On this Christmas Eve, we are gathered as God's people to celebrate again what Christ's coming means to the world. We join with Christians all over the world who are celebrating tonight. Around the wreath are candles representing four attitudes particular to the Christmas season, hope, love, joy, and peace. As Christians, we discover these things when we make Jesus the center of our lives. This is the candle of hope. Hope is a newborn baby's cry. Hope is a seed looking withered and dry. Given by God, it is more than a dream. Hope is a promise to things unseen. This is the candle of love. Love is a story that Christmas tells. In the voice of a carol, the chiming of bells. The birth of a baby come down from above, sent by God, proclaiming God's love. This is the candle of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, children of God, for Jesus brought peace for all of us with his blood. The fruit of the righteous, anxieties cease. A wise one gains life from a heart that's at peace. This is the candle of joy. Joy is a gift wrapped in silver and gold, a song in your heart and strength for the bold. The smile on the faces of friends as they greet. As you bring joy to others, your joy is complete. The white candle in the center of the wreath represents Christ. 
It is white to remind us of the purity and sinlessness of Christ. It's in the center to show that Christ is the center of all things created. Tonight at last, we light the Christ candle because this is the night that Christ was born. the Gospel of Luke, the story of Christmas. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration <coughs> and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house <coughs> excuse me <coughs> he was descended from the house and the family of David he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son <coughs> and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. <coughs> region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. children that would like to to come up front. I know you usually sit on the steps, but this time you won't want to do that. You'll want to be out here on the floor so that you can see this candle. I'm also going to tell you that I think I blew it and brought too short a jar and it's not actually going to work, but we'll see what happens. Because <clears throat> it's about candles. Candles are just a fascinating thing. What does, what does a fire need? What, what causes a fire to burn? Wood. Uh, what burns there? What yeah. Wood. Wood, she was on the right track, what? Um, smoke. Okay, fire needs? Tinder. Tinder, it needs fuel, right? It needs something to burn. In this case, it's the wick, which is string, and the wax. Mainly the wax is the fuel. And what else does it need? Yes. Air. It needs oxygen. Now, all around the candle, I've got blue water. It's just water. So we light the candles.
Now, do you see the, what the water is doing? The water is going up in the jar. The water actually never touches the flame. The flame goes out because I've shut off all the oxygen, right? And it change, also changes the air pressure. So as it goes out, it drew the water up into the jar. It actually sucked it on up there. Okay. Now, we are lights too. Each one of you is a light, the light of God, a light to the people around you. What do you need for fuel? Water. Water and food. Food and water. Uh, okay. And what about that oxygen, the air thing? We need that too, don't we? But when we're talking about how you are the light of God, there's also something else you need. Shelter. For our bodies to stay alive, that is true. What are you thinking? We need Jesus in our hearts. We need the love of the people around us. All of those things are what keeps our light going too. What were you going to say? God. We need God in order to keep up the light. All right. I thank you for coming up. And we'll talk more about light a little bit later when we get to the glow sticks. Candles are fascinating things. We love to see them in church. They make lovely centerpieces for our dining room table at home. But if you really want to light up a room, electricity wins out every time. There's plenty of darkness around. It's easy to find. Darkness never sleeps. It's always open for business. Darkness has swallowed up too many lives and devoured them whole. One feeble candle flame would make no impression on that darkness. Candles don't shed a lot of light, really. Just think back to the last time there was a power failure at your house after dark. Maybe you had to go rummaging around in the kitchen drawer until you found an old candle stub and a match, and then you breathed a sigh of relief. It's a comfort just to have it burning but in that power failure, you discover just how many candles you need to make up for even one little light bulb. And that's just indoors. If you carry your candle outside at night and hold it up to the starry heavens, you'll discover how utterly insignificant that light seems, how effectively it is swallowed up by darkness. And yet we still feel compelled to do it. We light the candles. Maybe the answer to the reason we do that is found in the book of Isaiah, where the prophet said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We crave that light, that light of God. We come to the sanctuary on Christmas Eve to remind ourselves that we do not have to walk in darkness. We acknowledge we don't have the power to push back the darkness by ourselves. We gather to acknowledge that we need the light of God, the light that Christ brought into the world, and that we need each other. <clears throat> There's a famous parable of a church that lost its historic building in a tragic fire. There was an architect in the congregation, so he asked for the privilege of designing the new church himself. He told them that he would take no fee, but that he must have freedom to build it just the way he saw fit. Since he was a fine architect, the people agreed. Then the entire community watched looked on with curiosity as the building went up. 
They were eager to see what sort of sanctuary would emerge. What they saw eventually was very pleasing indeed. Some called it a masterpiece of simplicity and elegance. The materials were all natural and displayed to their best advantage. The room was airy and open, the doorway inviting. A place was even found to display some of the old stained glass that had been salvaged from their former building. <clears throat> it was when the church was nearly completed that a child looked up and noticed that something seemed to be missing. Where are the lights? she asked. Sure enough, there was not a single light in the sanctuary and nothing to indicate where they could be installed. So they called in the architect and told him, you have made a mistake. You forgot to plan for lights. There's been no mistake, he said. Trust me, wait and see. So the night of dedication of the new building finally came, and it happened to be on Christmas Eve. As the members walked through the doors, each one was handed a small oil lamp of gleaming brass. <coughs> the architect had especially designed those lamps to match the design of the building. As one worshiper after another walked into the sanctuary, the room was bathed in a beautiful glow of light and shadows played upon the ceiling. You are the light of the world he told the people. If you are not present in worship, there will be a dark corner in need of light. And when worship is ended, take your light home with you. Allow it to shine in your homes and in your lives as a reminder of Christ. A reminder to the presence of Christ to whose glory the building is dedicated. So when the Christmas Eve service ended, and the company of worshipers made their way home, lamps in hand. It was as if a river of light was flowing from the church. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light had shone. When we go home tonight, will we leave this place the same as when we entered? Or will we realize that the little town of Bethlehem a light came to us through the events of that evening in the little town of Bethlehem. On us, a light has shined and the darkness never needs to win. That light brings us hope and love and joy to share. Joy to the world. Will you stand if you are able as we sing joy to the world?
Christmas is finally arriving. The light of the world has come to light our path. We're often dazzled by the lights, the glitter, the tinsel that the world has made of this Christmas season. We enjoy Christmas lights on our houses and in our homes, but here tonight we have a chance to get a glimpse of the true light, the light of the Spirit of God. Christ is born. Through the transforming birth of the baby in Bethlehem, the light of the world has come to light our path. So now you may get your candle, your glow stick, and crack it, and we'll see how much light we can get. Now take a good look around, look at one another, see the light of God that is lighting up our sanctuary. We create a bright flame together, a flame of Christ's light in the world. Consider the beauty of our light shining together. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is our hope for tomorrow. May we be witnesses of the light that Christ brings. Now, if you keep it through the evening, you'll find that it changes color slowly over the hours. So it can definitely light your path as you leave here. Silent night.
May the grace of God be on all of us on this Christmas Eve. May the blessings of Christ follow us home tonight. May we awaken tomorrow with that blessing in our hearts. May we greet all whom we meet with a carol on our lips, with joy in our hearts and a kind thought in our minds. May the full blessings of Christmas, of Christ come to live among us, bring you hope and faith for all the days ahead. Amen.